Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christeter. I'm an Ableton certified trainer. And for today's quick tip, I want to talk about something that people ask me about all the time, which is how do I warp somebody else's song? And this is really useful in two main situations. Number one, if you want to do a remix of somebody else's song, it needs to be warped and on time with the grid. And number two, uh, if you want to DJ with live, you need to be able to know, know what tempo this song is written at and make sure everything is warped correctly. So option number one is you can just figure out what tempo the song is. You can just Google it and then just type in the tempo and you're pretty much basically good to go. Uh, but I wanna show you in a situation where you have no idea what it is. So the way warping in live works is when you take a pre-made clip, something that's like a very short increment of time, like something like this drum loop right here. This is like a couple bar drum loop. When you drag it into live, it analyzes the length of that clip and the timing of the transients. So each time there's like a hit here and it guesses the tempo of that clip. And it tells you down here in the segment BPM, which is 95. And if we take a look at the name of the sample, it was recorded at 95 BPM, which means it's totally good to go. So for short clips like this, you can just trust it. It just does its job really, really well. However, in a whole song, like a, a actual like you know two to three, four minute song, it's too long and there's too many transients for a live to accurately guess it some of the time. Sometimes it can, sometimes it, it won't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a song and we're gonna toss it into live. Now, generally what Live will do is we'll add a bunch of warp markers where it thinks it should be warped. And I don't really like it when it does this. So I prefer to just do it manually, do it myself, so I know that I'm doing it correctly. So the first thing I wanna point out is in my preferences, under the Record Warp Launch tab, there's an option called Auto Warp Long Samples. I have this turned off. And that way, as you can just see, when I drag in a song, warp is turned off and it doesn't try to add a million warp markers for me. If it does do that, uh, if it does add a million warp markers, you can just turn warp off and then turn it back on and that should get rid of them. So I'm gonna first turn warp on and you can see that the tempo here is going to match whatever my global tempo is, which is 95 BPM. So this song may have been written at 95 BPM, it may not, I have no idea, I need to figure it out. So first step is gonna be turn warp on then what we need to do is we need to find a very clear downbeat. So by downbeat, I mean like the start of a phrase. Uh, usually you look for the very first really clear kick drum and that's a good way to do it. Sometimes this might be at bar one, sometimes it might be 20 or 30 bars into the song. Um, just taking a look at this song, this is a song by uh, It's All Tech, which is an artist that I like. Uh, there's a section right here and there's a section right here. Probably the start of this section here or the start of this section here will work. Uh, it just needs to be a downbeat, it just needs to be the first downbeat. So just for the sake of example, let's zoom in here and we'll give this a listen and we'll make sure we can find exactly when this section starts. It's pretty obvious, it's this guy right here and we can zoom like all the way in here and say it's that's right there. That's the first downbeat, that's the first part of this section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit set 111 here. This is going to line the one of the grid up with wherever I right clicked. On top of that, it takes my one warp marker from the beginning of the song and moves it over here as well, which is also handy. So once I've done that, I've lined the one up with the downbeat here. I'm gonna right click again, and I'm gonna hit warp from here straight. So there are several different warp from here algorithms. This is going to basically kind of like stretch out your audio uh, based off of transients and, and uh, different ways to analyze it. Warp from here straight tends to be the really good one. So I'm gonna click on this, and ideally what should happen is my segment BPM here will change from 95, which is just where it started, to whatever live thinks the tempo of the song is. So I'm gonna hit warp from here straight, and you can see everything moves around a little bit, and it says 86.01. So most likely this is just 86 BPM. If you get a decimal point within a couple of degrees from the like whole number, you could just type in the whole number and you're probably pretty good to go. So now that I've done that, I can take my global tempo down to 86 or close to it doesn't need to be exact and if i turn my metronome on and i play the two of these together the timing of my metronome should line up with the timing of my song so it looks on time sounds on time we can see the transient markers here look like they're on time it sounds like it's on time so that means this song is recorded at 86 bpm which means if i would like to loop this uh, for remixing purposes or for, again for like djing or live performance I can zoom in on almost like any part of this song. I can select, you know, one bars, two bars, four bars, eight bars, and just hit play. And it'll, it'll just loop nicely. So again, great for remixing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, or for DJing. The other thing that I will recommend you do once you've done this is double check your work because 
if you are off even by like one BPM, it might start on time and then drift off time as a good song goes along. So every like 30 bars or so, I'll double, I'll double check, I'll zoom in, I'll make sure that it looks like it's on time and I'll check with the metronome to make sure it stays on time. Uh, but that's basically it. That's how you can find the tempo of pretty much any song you want. Uh, like I said, you could also just Google the song or you could use like mixed in key or other software that tells you the tempo of the song. This will not only get everything starting on time, but also make sure everything stays in time throughout the whole song. In fairly rare situations, sometimes it will give you the wrong number. It will just guess incorrectly and you might need to go in here and, and move things around and dial it in. The way that I do that is generally I'll try to find the next downbeat and I will just click and drag to move it around and you can see everything on either side changes. And so I'll try to just take the first downbeat, move the second downbeat so it's on time and then work my way from there to figure it out. Uh, but that's it. First, start by turning warp on if it's not already on. Find the first downbeat, right click, hit set 111 here. Right click again, hit warp from here straight, and then double check your work. That's the process. Should take you know, the first couple times you do this, it'll take a few minutes, but after you do that, under 30 seconds, you should be able to warp almost any song. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Hopefully that's useful for you if you are again gonna be remixing or DJing or kind of playing around with other people's audio. Uh, if you did enjoy that, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more videos like this coming out real soon. On top of that, feel free to check out the website catalyzedacademy.com for more info about classes and workshops and lessons that we offer. Uh, in addition, if you have ideas for topics that you'd like to see presented in the future, uh, feel free to put those in the comment section below. Again, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.